So then, we've decided for A5, if we're going to take it on track, we're going to put a uh, RaceLogic HD2 in there. We've already got one in Arabifa, so, and the main expense really is in the unit itself. So what we thought was, RaceLogic do like a second car kit, which it, it comes with the cameras, the mounts, all the stuff to mount the cameras on power cable which you can get then with um, a cigarette lighter on but on this one we're going to put it in with a switch just in uh, centre console just so we can turn it on and off the way we'll know it's on or off is from the OLED display which peel that off when it goes in that's what's telling you your lap time which Scott's done a video on that showing you how we use this sort of thing when we're on track with the data it produces you get a live lap timer which you can show it based upon a, if your fastest lap or a predefined lap if you want to see how much quicker or slower you are than a, a different person who drove your car you can set that as a reference lap and away you go I said I think it's a bad idea tyre crash when you're on track by having a um, predictive lap timer telling you that you're a bit slower than somebody that makes you a bit braver into the next corner which sometimes ends in disaster we're going to stick this on windscreen in the Abifa we've got it mounted quite solid but that goes onto there stick it on the windscreen away you go now this cable here is interesting because this we put a couple of these wires to the standard CAN bus wires plug it into the splitter here which goes into that which that goes into it as well so you've got them going in like that then we can log on more modern cars it's a lot easier we can log steering angle, brake pressure, wheel speeds across all four wheels, coolant temperature, boost pressure, a lot of stuff. RaceLogic helps us out a lot. We are a beefer creating custom channels so we could log stuff that weren't available on there, sort of off the shelf, OBD sort of stuff. So, worked pretty good for us. So, like now, we've got everything we could possibly need going to. Race logic. So when we drag that data up, we've got one place that we look at data because it's impossible to have a laptop logging while you're racing. But this, as soon as you set off, it's sort of pre-recording all the time while it's turned on. But as soon as you set off, you get like 30 seconds before and 30 seconds after, and that's GPS based using that antenna. So you never lose any data. If you crash, obviously you want to get it from a permanent live because we've had that before where it could crash and battery cuts or somebody comes and does your kill switch that'll corrupt data so you have that going to a permanent live so unless you flick the switch to turn that off it's always getting a battery live um, and then we've got a bracket here this is like a quick release bracket so we can pull the actual unit in and out which we'll see that in a bit more detail as we uh, as we get to installing it but the idea with this kit because it's a second car kit and we're not going to be using that car tons on track it's likely that we're going to put this in something like the city go or whatever we're going to try and make this as central as possible in the car so it's connected to every everything's connected together centrally all the extra slack and the cables are all kept there try and not hide as much stuff as we can and then we can easily take this out and put it in another car so it can be a pain the only thing we've got to route really far into the car is this because we're going to need we're going to, we're going to need to be able to see it at the front not obviously you don't want to be somewhere behind us all hidden away so that's probably the only thing that we're going to have to route quite far into the car everything else should be fairly straightforward just disconnect a couple of spade connectors here and leap switching car so yeah it should uh, should work out pretty good the only thing that has been a problem for us these are what this mounts on which you can come up with whatever mounting sort of setup you want but these mount onto your roll cage and these are I think they're 39mm or something like that our roll cage is 43 mil, so we'd have to just modify them a little bit or we might 3D print something, not too sure. We're going to get this installed, hopefully then we don't, we don't lose any data while we're at uh, Nürburgring and, why, and it'll be good for us doing the little bits of testing that we're going to do while we're at the track. We, um, we've got everything in one place then, because that is the problem with most bits of testing. The data acquisition, if you've got a logger there, the camera there, this there, that there, you, you're not keeping everything in one position, one place should I say, to look at it. You might have three or four people looking at the data, but if it's all in one place you can all be looking and saying, oh well, 
that's why it's not getting as hot that lap because it works quicker lap. Whereas if you're just looking at a raw coolant temperature log, you might think, oh, it's, we've improved it last time by unshrouding radiator or changing thermostat or whatever, and you've not, you've just not been pushing it as hard. So it's always a good idea to have everything in one place and away you go. So we'll get this installed and uh, we'll try and get a nice seam file made and uh, do some videos. You can record while you're driving all the time, you don't have to be on a circuit to get it. Obviously your predictive lap time is not going to work unless you uh, turn your local uh, ring road into a racetrack, which is not a good idea. So yeah, see how we get on. Right then, so we're just part way through installing RaceLogic V-Box HD2 into A5. So the idea with fitting this was to get it in so it were easy to get in and out really. There's going to be some stuff that's got to be semi-permanent as such like we're, um, we're going to put the switch in there which uh, means we need to get that out. Um, but the OLED display, we're just going to have that on suction mount on the screen there and then the wiring we're just tucking it up which I'll show you this side we're just tucking stuff up in here and then back down again and round so we're not actually having to take any trim out we've got a camera facing forwards which has got its little cap on and then a camera facing backwards just in the middle they've got like them uh, like a tie wrap jubilee clip sort of thing like a plastic version microphone there so you can hear passenger screaming and we've got the mount bolted to our roll cage. We just had to grind that out a little bit just to suit our so we weren't going to damage powder coat too much. So the part that's missing here is the part that we're going to have to pinch from our Ibiza because it's very rare we're going to be using the Ibiza and this together. So that's why we're going to use that. We've got it mounted in a position that's easy enough to get to because there's an SD card slot here. So you just need to be able to pull that out. And the important thing about where you get the power from it needs to be a permanent 12 volt because which is obviously no good if you leave the switch on because it'll be recording all the time you're driving but if you have an accident and you turn ignition off or somebody just turns it off quickly after a run or you have a problem while you're driving on track and you need to cycle ignition you don't want it knocking off because it'll just lose all your data so it's fairly straightforward install a little bit messier than you'd want it to be with cables because ultimately this cable's got to go absolutely everywhere to get everything where you want it but the majority of what needs to be done is happening in this central bit I don't think up to now other than this we're not going to take any trim out let's have a quick look round back and show you the next part of it so I mentioned about CAN bus we need to tag into the CAN bus so that is the white and the blue wire here these other ones are not used, so it don't really matter. We'll just earth that one as far as I'm aware. But then ones, we don't really need them. Therefore, uh, if you're doing some data logging uh, with a serial part, I think something like that anyway, I can't remember. Not some of that we don't use on any of those cars. So what we thought, what well, easiest thing, rather than taking loads of trim out and tagging into stuff we're not sure on, take this little panel down. This is amplifier for speakers. This has got a little sub loom that connects it to the main car loom here so that's the main car loom obviously you don't really want to be chopping into stuff if you're leaving it for um, if you want to be taking it in and out often so what we decided was if we really messed something up here and got it wrong and had to start heat shrinking connectors and stuff and doing a bit of trial and error this little sub loom it's not going to be expensive obviously try not to damage out if you can but it's not a big deal so we found the can i and the can low which is on this car it's um orange and violet, orange and brown are your CAN bus wires that we want to tag into. Found what that corresponds to on this plug, which it ends up being different colours, which is a little bit annoying. So then we've just done a little sort of T splice, butt splice, whatever you want to call it, into there. That's going to get soldered and then heat shrunk. Two layers of heat shrink if we can get away with it. And then we've done that to the blue and white wire, so then they're going to correspond exactly to what they are so you've got blues high whites low but as long as you get them as long as you get them uh, connected in you're all right but we, we kept them the same and then we can't get it wrong at this end as long as we get it right at that end these will all be good so when we've connected the canvas up like i said earlier we're going to be able to log 
if you spend a lot of time, you can pretty much log everything that the ECU can see. Well, any of the modules, if you want to spend the time sort of uh, unpicking it and uh, defining it, you can log everything. But Race Logic are quite helpful and they already define a lot of this uh, stuff for you. The important stuff, at least brake pressure, throttle position, steering angle, wheel speeds. That's pretty much what you need to get get by as using this as a driver tool then like we said earlier all your temperatures and stuff like that that you can have in extra to help you with maybe your chassis setup or your cooling setup or whatever it's all helpful more information the better in one place perfect so we're going to get this soldered up they're connected in and tucked out at way get all the final bits installed inside there and neatened up and just what matt's doing at the minute so just have a look exactly what every good mechanic needs to do YouTube just Sorry. learning how to uh, get the centre console out so thank you to this guy Peugeot Citroen 2CV a couple of years ago did this video 54,000 views so we're probably tenoring with Matt's <laughs> skills so once we figure out how to get that centre console out we'll have a little switch in there and uh, yeah, should be working, so we'll try and uh, get it all work, up and running and we'll do a little video driving it on the road showing what you can display and how it can work. Obviously when you're on track you want to look at different stuff. Hurry up Matt. So, we're out in the A5. Finally got the uh, race logic all in and working. I'll just, uh, before I strap my scent in, I'll go down and uh, Let's set this to what we want. I've just got my seatbelt on because I needed to be quick. Because this is automatically triggering, I think when you do five kilometres an hour, the uh, the recorder starts. It's got a buffer 30 seconds each way, something along them lines, but I don't want to do two techs of this really. So we uh, set off and we'll talk about what we're doing while we're driving. So, the cam bus took a little bit more working out than we expected. We thought we'd be able to tag it in at the back there, but it wouldn't work. So what we decided to do was um, go straight to the ECU. We didn't want to kill the full diagnostics if we had any problems with the connection or whatever, so we just, Went straight to the ECU and got the uh, campus wires from there. So that's working now. But as you can probably see on the uh, on the scene file, you can see when I'm turning the wheel. See when I'm braking. That's got the brake pressure as well. It's not just an on and off. You see the accelerator pedal. The gear indicator should be working as well. I'm hoping it's uh, all doing what it should be doing. So the cameras, I can't really show you till I've stopped safely, but what you can do, you can use the uh, Race Logic app on your phone and you can get the angles using your, using your mobile phone, so that's, that's there. So that's how you get your camera angles all set up. <coughs> the scene file takes a little bit of work to do. That's what we've ended up doing is uh, use the generic cam functions that the uh, race logic supply, but we don't get everything that we need from that. So then we've mixed in some uh, Audi R8 brake pressure and steering angle and stuff like that and got, got everything that we needed. So it's worked out all right in end. There we go, can get that to do what we want to do. In a minute, it's on speed, so you tell me how fast we're going. I think we're going to probably lower that down a little bit if we can before we take it but we did have it originally here but it's just right where you want it to look when you're trying to get on the apex so we've got a few more upgrades to do before we take it on track and a uh, couple couple of three more videos before we can uh, 
get any footage of that uploaded. But we're not far off. The car's nearly where we want it to be. And uh, it's uh, feeling good. Really happy with it. And uh, yeah, not much else to say. So hopefully this video were interesting. Not as probably not as informative as we could be. And, uh, but you'll see why a lot of this is relevant when we uh, when we take it on track and we've done a video. It's not really too uh, interactive, but we've done a video showing you how we use the V box on track, and it's a similar. Whatever car you're running, you're looking at the same things. You're wanting it to be, uh, you're going to make sure you, what you're feeling and what you, what you're seeing, is visible in the data. So anyway, no point doing anything too crazy. We're not at the point where we want to be doing any launching and stuff like that. But we can uh, now we've got this in. I put the. Uh, performance boxing as well when we take it out just for the first one just to make sure that the tests that we're doing are all comparable but we uh, we'll get this back on the dyno get it all ironed out from the uh, the clutch issues that we've been having as well and uh, yeah see how we get on